Let's take a look at a few more problems of Diophantus. The Arithmetic, Book 2, Problem 21, define two numbers so the square of either minus the other is square. So let's think about this. We want to find two numbers where one of them squared minus the other is a square. So these are really two conditions. This relationship has to hold for both of them. So if we make our first number x plus 1, we have x plus 1 squared minus something should be a square. So our goal here is to try to pick our second number to be something where this is automatically true. So we know that x plus 1 squared is x squared plus 2x plus 1. And if we subtract 2x plus 1, we'll get a square. And what this means is that if we make our two numbers x plus 1, our first number, and 2x plus 1, our second number, we'll satisfy one of these requirements automatically. The square of 1 minus the other is a square. And so Diophantus begins his solution by saying let the two numbers be x plus 1 and 2x plus 1, satisfying one condition. Now there's a second condition. We've required 2x plus 1 squared minus x plus 1 to be a square. The second number squared minus the first has to be a square. So the thing we might notice here is that when we expand this out, the constant term drops out. And so we can say that this difference, 2x plus 1 squared minus x plus 1, well, let that be the square 9x squared. And so we see that our second and remaining condition has been turned into an equation, and we can solve. which gives us a value of x. And again, the important thing here is that x is not actually our solution. The numbers we're looking for are x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. So our two numbers are going to be Now, for a variety of reasons, one of the most important problems in Diophantus occurs in Book 5, Problem 9, where Diophantus considered the problem of dividing 13 into two squares, both of which were greater than 6. To do so, he has to solve the problem of finding a square very nearly equal to 6 and a half, and the procedure he follows has been termed adequating. A rough translation of this term might be as nearly equal as possible. Now, while the problem is to find a square very nearly equal to 6 and a half, we can actually make this problem easier to solve by making it more restrictive. And so Diophantus takes a look at the problem to add a square to 6 and a half to make it a square. Now, while we could add x squared, in recognition of our goal of making our result as close to 6 and a half as possible, we'll let our square be 1 over x squared. And so we want 6 and a half plus 1 over x squared to be a square. Now this does require us to deal with rational expressions, so Diophantus goes through a sequence of manipulations that we can represent as follows. If 6 and a half plus 1 over x squared, then 4 times this amount, 26 plus 4 over x squared, will also be a square. Or if we let 1 over y be 2 over x, then we want 26 plus 1 over y squared to be a square. But if 26 plus 1 over y squared is a square, then so is 26y squared plus 1. And so at the end of the day, we want 26y squared plus 1 to be the square of something. And at this point, you might bring up an important observation. Diophantus only has one variable, what are we doing introducing y? And in fact, since Diophantus only has one variable, he begins with the assumption, let 26x squared be a square. And so we have to figure out what we want it to be the square of. So let's think about that. Since we want 26x squared 
plus 1 to be the square of something, then it must be the square of something with a constant of 1 or negative 1. Also, we might notice that since 5 squared equals 25, we'll let the variable part be 5x. There's no real requirement that this be the case, but it turns out that if we do let it be close to the square root, we get much better results. So we'll assume that 26x squared plus 1 is the square of 5x plus 1, and we can solve. And if x is equal to 10, then we know that 26 times 10 squared plus 1 equals 5 times 10 plus 1 squared. Now, we actually wanted to add something to 6 and a half, but that's okay. We can work our way back to 6 and a half. And so 6 and a half plus the square 1 four hundredth gives us a square 5 halves plus 1 twentieth. And so 1 four hundredth is the required square to add to 6 and a half.